Hey guys, Brett here, and today I'm taking a look at a new software called Video Pages. So, what exactly is Video Pages? Well, Video Pages is a web based page builder that allows you to build landing pages, squeeze pages, and sales pages. Now, there have been other softwares out there that let you build squeeze pages and sales pages. I actually own a software that lets you build squeeze pages and sales pages. However, Video Pages is unique in a couple of ways. First, its interface is unique. Second, it focuses more on video style pages. And finally, the pages that you build with this software are completely mobile responsive. Now, I have spent a few hours testing this. I actually spent a few hours testing this more than once, and I found things in the software that I like, that I really like, and I found things in the software that I really don't like. So I'm gonna go over each one of those things and show you exactly what I found and then tell you what I think of this software overall. Now it would be impossible for me to show you every single function of this software because it took me hours to see how they all work and it would take me hours to show you every single function. But I do wanna go over the basic creation and show you how to basically create a page with this software. So I've just logged into my account and the very first thing that I need to do is look on the right hand side of the screen here and click on this green button that says add new campaign. So I'm gonna click that and it's gonna ask me for a name for my campaign. Now this is for my reference only, nobody's gonna see this, so I can name it anything I want. Generally, if I'm promoting a specific product, I would name my campaign after that product. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in my test though and click on create campaign. Now my campaign is now created. And the first thing that you have to do, obviously, is build the page. And th this is actually one of the things that I really didn't like particularly about this software. Uh, the page builder is down below. You have to like scroll past the stats. It, I don't know why the stats always show. I would have liked to have seen like some kind of uh, you know, open and close so you can hide or unhide the statistics. But, you know, honestly, that's just me being picky. Uh, it's just the GUI, you know, the interface. Other people it might not mind it at all. Uh, so it's really not a negative. It's just me being picky about that I don't like the way the layout is. But I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to select the template that I want to use. And I like this template right here. So I could preview the template if I want, but I already know that I like this template, so I'm just gonna click on use this template. And this is now taking me over to the page builder where I can customize the template to suit my particular needs. And you can see there's these widgets on the left-hand side here. And these widgets allow me to add, remove, and edit things that are inside of the template. Besides that, the elements that are already in the template are editable just by mousing over them. For example, if I want to change this text, I can mouse over the text, click on it, and it's going to ask me what I want to do with this particular element. So in this case, I want to edit it. So I'm going to click on Edit Text, and it is now going to allow me to change the text the way I want. So I can sit in here and use the WYSIWYG editor to enter all my own text any way that I want to have it. All of the elements on the page are like this. For example, if I want to go ahead and change this image, I just click on it, and then I can select to edit the image's settings. This will allow me to configure the image, and then I can change the image to anything that I want. So here's actually an image that I just happen to have on my computer that I've already uploaded. I'll click on Add Image, and you can see that the image then changes inside of the template. I can change things like its width, its height, I can change the radius, and the radius is how much of a circle it is, if it's going to be square or if it's going to be a circle. I can edit that as I want, and I can add any type of CSS settings that I want, like a box shadow. And uh, for anybody that doesn't know, a box shadow is actually a drop shadow. Uh, it's just called box shadow in CSS. I don't know why. Um, I can add any type of margin or padding or anything like that that I want. This actually show, brings me to the second thing that I don't like about the GUI. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It might just be my monitor, but there is a close button up here. I can actually see when I mouse over it, but on my monitor, I can't see it. it the colors are very similar. And I, I couldn't see it right there. Um, and, and I'm only mentioning this because it seems to be kind of a theme with this particular software. The, the GUI does need a little bit of tweaking. So I'm going to go ahead and click the close, though, here. Now, I want to show you 
how you add elements because uh, as you can see editing all of the elements is really easy but you can also add elements if you want as well so let's say for example I want to add something to my page I have all of these elements that I can choose from I can add text I can add a video I can add an image a separator an opt-in form a button a countdown timer uh, there's a whole bunch of them here that I can actually choose from and add to my page and it is drag and drop so let's just say for example I want to add a countdown timer and let me see if I can find it again there it is so I'll just click on this and then drag it into my page now one thing you're going to notice about this drag and drop is that you can't drop things anywhere you want. For example, I cannot very specifically position this. So if I wanted it, say, right here, I can't do that. I can only drag it in certain areas based on the layout and based on the template. And the reason for this is that in order to have it that you can drag it and drop it anywhere you want you have to use what's called absolute positioning and it's a, a way of positioning elements on a website you cannot use absolute positioning if you want your website to be mobile responsive it's just not possible responsive and absolute position are not compatible uh, that's actually why my own page builder is not mobile responsive it's because I use absolute positioning in order to give people the maximum flexibility on where they can position their elements but it's a trade-off either you can have maximum flexibility or you can have mobile responsive you cannot have both it's just impossible uh, this being a mobile responsive builder you are limited in where you can put elements to the layout of the template that you're using. So, for example, I can put these anywhere in here that I want, but I can't put it up here if I want. So that's just a trade-off. It's just the way it is. It's not a bug in the software. It's not poor software design. It's just, uh, you know, you have to choose one or the other. You know, full flexibility when you're dropping elements into your template or mobile responsiveness. And in this particular instance, they have chosen mobile responsiveness. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my timer right there. And then again, it's very easy to edit if I want to. All I have to do is click on it and I can go over to its settings, configure it the way I want to, where it's going to ask me like the countdown date, the exact time, uh, what I want to happen when it expires. There's a couple of different timer layouts in here. Uh, they call them styles. So I can choose how big I want it to be. That's, that's the large. And I can choose some layouts as well here I believe. Let me see if I can find them. There we go. Uh, there's a flat, a circle, a flat border, a circle border, and what's called style six. I don't know where they got that name from, but I actually like the way that looks. Uh, I think it's called style six because it's the sixth choice. <laughs> so it's not a very clever name, but it is a cool looking layout for the timer. So I'm going to pick that one. Now, if I want to move elements around, I can move elements really easily. All I have to do is click on this move icon that's over every element when I'm mousing over it, and I can then move it around. Uh, but this actually brings me back to what I was saying earlier about how you can't drop it exactly where you want. So let me show you what I mean. So I cannot drop this like in the middle, like right now, you can see how it's kind of to the left of the text. But what if I wanted it exactly in the middle of the text? I can't do that. I cannot grab it and then drop it over here. Uh, it's because it's just not the way it works. It is, you know, a responsive layout. It, it's a, what's called a relative position layout as opposed to an absolute position layout. However, they do have a solution for this. So what I can do is I can go ahead and click on the settings right here and I can go to the margin. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to use padding. Padding makes more sense for this. So I can go to the padding and you can see where it says padding left. And anybody that knows what CSS is and how CSS works probably already knows what I'm about to say. Uh, but if you don't know what CSS is or how it works, padding is just white space. So what this is asking you for is how much white space should there be on the left. Basically, it'll allow you to tweak the positioning of a particular element. So I can go ahead and start increasing the left padding. And what I'm doing is basically moving it right. Because what I'm doing is I'm telling the software to add white space on the left of that element. 
Similarly, I can also move the element down if I want. If I want to move it down, I'll add padding to the top. You can say as I add padding to the top, everything moves down. And this is again because it uses what's called relative position. Since I'm adding padding to the top of that and everything underneath it is relative to that, I'm actually moving everything down, the entire website down. So why padding isn't going to allow you to have the type of absolute drag and drop positioning that some other builders have, uh, it is going to allow you to tweak the positioning a little bit, especially when you're going left and right. So you can kind of position things centered if you want to. I noticed that there's also some really cool like additional features in this. For example, in this image here, I can go ahead and click on its settings. Where, where is it here? Click on the settings for the image, and I can go down to animation settings, which I thought this was pretty neat. So I can select animation. I'll change it to on page load. And I'll change it to, there's a couple of animations here. I like, ta-da, we'll do that one. Close that up. And this will give a cool little animation when the page loads. So let me go ahead and save this, and I'll preview it, and we'll show you what I mean. Go over here and enter the preview. And you can see there's that little animation. And I can add that to any elements that I want. So it's pretty cool. It's a good way to draw attention to a specific you know, part of your website. I wouldn't overdo it with those animations, but if there's something I really want people to see, you know, I would add a little animation just to draw their eyes because people's eyes are drawn to movement, which is why they've added that. Now, when I'm in the preview, you'll see that there's a little box on the right-hand side here, and this is going to allow me to preview it as if it's in a specific type of browser. So right now, I'm previewing it, previewing it as if it was in a desktop. If I want to preview it as if it was in a tablet, a tablet facing up and down, I can go ahead and click on that, and that will preview it as if it was in a tablet. And that will let me see the design in tablet mode, which, as you can see, again, it is mobile responsive. If I want to preview it horizontally in a tablet, I can choose the next one, a phone, or a horizontal phone. So it's pretty cool. It's cool that the that the designs are mobile responsive. You know, I, I'll be honest, I've never been like a huge person that worried about mobile responsiveness. Um, but, you know, there's there's no way that you can deny it. It's becoming more important every single day. You know, for a long time, I kind of like blew off mobile response. like, oh, who cares? You know, people still use computers. People still use desktops. Uh, but the simple fact is that it is starting to become more important. Now, while I was using this software, and while I was testing it actually just a couple hours ago, um, I did notice a bug in this software. And the bug was that when I was saving my pages, these background graphics and the templates were always disappearing. They were always vanishing. They were never saving. And what actually it turned out to be is that there's a bug that this doesn't work properly inside of Firefox. I did test this in IE, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. It works properly in every browser except for Firefox. Inside of Firefox, for some reason, when you save, it does not save these background graphics. Now, I have reported this to the vendors. I let both of the vendors know about it, and I have no doubt in my mind that they will fix this. Uh, and I also don't think it's a horrible deal to say, hey, that this works best in Chrome. Um, but, you know, I just do want to be honest about it, that I did find that bug, and that you will not be able to use it as it stands right now at this time of testing inside of the Firefox browser. You'll have to either use Chrome or use Safari um, or use IE, but I hope nobody's still using IE. All right, so let me go ahead and save this, and I'm going to head back over to the dashboard, and I'll show you some other things that I found about this and some of the other features that I've tested. Okay, so the first thing that I found that I thought was really cool is this right here, where it says Add Variant, and that's for split testing. And anybody that doesn't know what split testing is, it's where you actually design two or more pages, and you send some of your traffic to each one, so that way you can see which one gives you the best conversion rate. Once you find out which one gives you the best conversion rate, you then make that your main page because that's the one that's bringing in the most sales or the most opt-ins. Split testing is an essential feature. I mean, I split test. When, when I launch a product, uh, you know, like even on JVZoo, when I launch a new software or, you know, I have a new product coming out, 
what a lot of people don't know is I have multiple versions of my sales page and I split test it so I can see which one works better. A lot of times the changes are just small little changes. They're just a little change to a graphic or a little change to some of the text. But those changes can make a big difference. I mean, sometimes it's a two, three, four percent conversion difference. You know, and that adds up to a lot more opt-ins or a lot more money if you're selling a product. So I really like that they added the split testing, but I actually really like how easy they made it to do split testing is super easy. So I have my page designed here. If I want to do a split test, all I do here is click on add variant. That's it. Now I can click on the edit and this will actually bring up what looks like the same page, but it's not. It's actually my other page copied. So now I just make my simple change, the change to the text or whatever little change that I want to test, save it, and I have a whole new version made for myself. The software will then automatically send traffic between these two variations and report the conversion rate for me so I can see which one is converting the best. And I can do that as much as I want. I could just keep clicking add variant. I can split test between you know, up to, I don't know, I don't think there's a limit, as many different pages as I want. And when I see ones that aren't converting well, all I do is remove them. And then that way those won't be shown anymore because they were not converting well. So I will say that the split testing in this is one of the easiest ways I've ever seen. It's very cool. Okay, so now I spent the last you know a couple of minutes hyping up the split testing feature and showing you how much I love the split testing. Uh, let me show you something that I didn't care for. You can actually see right here there is a download as HTML button. So when I clicked that, I figured, okay, that's cool. I can download my page and you know upload it to my own site, upload my my page that I've created. Uh, and, and that actually brings me to another thing that I want to mention real quick. You notice how this says front page. You can actually click new step and add multiple pages. So you can kind of build like a funnel or even a little bit of a website with this. It doesn't have to be just one page. Uh, so when I saw this download as HTML, I was pretty happy with that. I was like, that's sweet. I can basically use this to build a website and download the HTML and put it on my own server. Awesome. So when I clicked the download as HTML, that's when I saw something that I didn't particularly care for. So let me go ahead and download the HTML for this page that I just created, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so if you look at my browser here, you can actually see I'm actually have my browser pointed at the local file that I just downloaded from video pages. And uh, it looks great. It looks exactly as I built it. But when I went to view the HTML, that's when I saw what I didn't like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on view page source and you can see the HTML code that you download. This is exactly what they gave me when I went to download it and all it is is an iframe. So you're not actually downloading the HTML. It's just an iframe to the, your page on their server. Uh, so I was a little disappointed about that. Now other people might not be as disappointed as I was. Other people might not even care. But you know, me being a developer, me being a person that's into development, you know, I I wanted to get my my page. I wanted to get my code. Uh, so I I don't think that this is a viable thing for building a website or building a web page if you expect to get HTML code. If you don't care about that, then none of this matters. Now, a lot of people aren't going to care about getting the HTML. Uh, they're just going to want to, you know, have a page. They want to be able to have a sales page or a squeeze page where they can, you know, send traffic to and maybe sell a product or maybe get an opt-in. And this is where you're going to use this link right here. So this is your link to your page on this software. So you can actually see it says my pages myvpages.co forward slash 2554. Now, I kind of wish that was a little bit more unbranded. It's not, you know, too horrible, but it does say myvpages.co. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, though. And you can see right here that this is the page that I've created. It's right there, myvpages.co forward slash 2554. And uh, so this is really cool because I don't even need hosting now. I don't need anything. I don't need a domain name. You know, if you're just getting started, this is going to be a really good option for you because you don't have to buy a domain name. You don't have to buy a hosting package. You don't have to upload anything. You can just have a page 
you know, a squeeze page or a sales page or even a bonus page or any type of page that you want, you can just have it right here. It's fully mobile responsive. It's easy to set up uh, and you don't have to worry about, you know, any type of code or hosting or anything like that. So for the total newbie, this is going to be a really cool software to use because it's going to make it easy. You know, I mean, there's nothing to do. It's basically all done for you. Now, for somebody that's, you know, into IAM a little bit more or maybe a little bit more experienced, what you're going to want is to have your page on your own domain name. You're not going to want it on their domain name. Even though it's not really that branded or anything, you're going to want to have your own page on your own domain. And uh, downloading the HTML is not really an option. Uh, and, you know, having it on their site isn't going to be ideal for you if you have your own domain name. What they do have, though, right here, it's pretty cool, and I was glad to see it, is the custom domain option. So what you can do is you can actually click this, and you can add a domain, so that way your domain points to their page. So when people will go to your domain name, the hosting and everything will still be done on their servers, but your domain name will point to their page. Uh, nobody will know it, nobody will be able to see it, um, but it will allow you to use your custom domain name with their hosting and their servers. There is going to be a little bit of work to do. You're going to need to set up custom DNS settings inside of your domain name, wherever you get your domain name from, whether it's you know HostGator or GoDaddy. You're going to have to go in and change the DNS settings. It, it may sound a little hard, but it's not. And honestly, if you're at the point where you're using a custom domain name, you should know how to do that anyway. And if you don't know how to do that, you know, you should learn how to do that. It isn't that difficult. It only takes like two minutes. But it will allow you to actually use their hosting with your domain name. So that's a cool feature for the people that are a little more advanced, that are people that are a little more into IM and that are ready to use their own domain and don't want to use their hosted version. So I like that they had that and they also have the hosted. I like that there's an option for everybody. You know, if you're if you have your own domain name, you can use it. If you don't have a domain name, you know, you can use their hosting and you know their little URL there that they make for you. So no matter what, you know, you can use this and there's something here for you. Okay, now I haven't shown you all of the features in the software, and like I said, if I tried to, it would just take forever. This video would be, you know, two hours long, but I have shown you the main features of the software and the ones that I particularly liked. So the only question that's left is, what do I think of video pages overall? Well, I'll be honest, I don't particularly like the GUI, the, the user interface. Why I don't hate it, I don't love it. I, I think it could have been better, and I do think that they will improve it, but the way it stands right now, I think it's... You know, it's just not the best for me. Now, not just aesthetically, but just the way that it works. It's not, it's not you know, the best. I probably rate it 7 out of 10 if somebody had to ask me to rate it on a 1 to 10 scale. It does have a bug that you can't save it inside of Firefox. So it's basically not usable with the Firefox browser as it stands right now at this time of testing. I have reported that bug uh, to the vendors, and I do believe that they will fix it. But at the time of testing, it did have that bug, and it's not usable inside of Firefox. So you'll have to use it with Safari, or you'll have to use it with Chrome. However, despite these things that I don't particularly like about it, the things that I do like about it do overshadow them. This is an incredibly easy way to build quality, professional, mobile, responsive video sales pages and squeeze pages. If you're just getting started, if you don't have a website, if you don't have hosting, it's really going to be great for you because they provide a, you know, a little URL where you can put your squeeze page and your sales page right on. You don't even need a domain name. You don't need hosting. But if you do have your own domain name, you can point it at this as well. So either way, you know, it's going to have something for everybody. It's going to be really easy to use. It's going to be quick to set up a page. And again, as I said, your pages are going to be mobile responsive, which is starting to become more and more important, honestly. Now, would I use this to build an entire website? Probably not. Would I use this to build an entire funnel? Uh, you know, maybe. I, I don't know. But would I definitely use this tool? For sure, this is a viable tool for anybody that's in the IM business, for anybody that's collecting leads, building squeeze pages, or trying to sell something. 
Also, if you're an affiliate marketer, this is a really good tool to quickly make bonus pages. So, you know, anybody that's ever bought an IAM product or sold an IAM product probably see, has seen a bonus page. It's usually where there's a little review of the product that you're promoting and then some bonuses listed underneath it and then a big button with your affiliate link so you can get the sale. Now, I think that this is a great thing to use to build bonus pages as well. It's also going to be viable for any type of video opt-in page, squeeze page, or video sales page. While it's not a perfect tool, it is a quality tool that definitely is worth investing in, especially with the split testing feature. I mean, that alone is pretty awesome. Um, it's being sold at a really low price. There's no monthly fee. I think it's like $27 for the initial pricing. Uh, and, and at that price, it's well worth investing in. So while I tend to ramble, I'm going to try to stop rambling right now. I'm just going to finish up it's by saying that if you're in the IM space, if you're trying to build squeeze pages, if you're trying to build you know, bonus pages, if you're trying to sell anything, if you're trying to build, you know, collect leads, and especially if you want to do them with any type of video, which video is the most, you know, sought after content on the web right now. Video pages, especially with its low one-time price, is going to be a solid investment. It's a good tool and it's worth having.